Okay, I want to do a quick review on Nameless ROM. Um, this currently is running the February 1st, 2014 build. Um, <clears throat> I was using the 31st build from January initially, and I updated this morning. It is Android 4.4.2. Um, immediately when I installed the ROM, what I noticed until I let it sit in real good is that it, the knock-on did not work for me. However, going into device control and device, scroll over here, knock-on, turn it off, turn it back on, and it worked just fine. Had no problems after that. Going through device control here, there are no options for performance. I did check and look through here. I didn't see anything listed there. Tasker, FS trimming. Tools. This is one some folks might actually use. Uh, quick ability to edit the build prop. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, freezer for freezing and unfreezing apps. So it's useful. Let's go over here. I'll show you the update center. Makes it quick and easy to find updates. That's how I updated mine this morning. I just went to the update center, checked refresh, and it showed me that the February 1st nightly was available for the. This is the AT&T D800. Um, downloaded it. It downloads to the updates folder. Does not download to the downloads folder. So when you go to flash it, that's where you'll find it in the updates folder, which is uh, still on your SD card. Interface. You got your your usual options over here. Interface. You can edit your battery icon, your carrier label, uh, show your network speed, double tap to sleep on the uh, status bar. Okay. Notification drawer. Again, um, you can. Um, make some small changes there. I really didn't make any customizations for notification tour, it's just not something that I that I feel I need to um, for my preferences. Quick pull down obviously you got that in your quick settings. You got your tiles and your layouts. You can add more tiles. Uh, you can change the screen timeout modes. I have uh, I like the fact that they have quiet hours supported in this ROM so I use quiet hours. I think it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's very useful uh, as you can see here. Also, put a little volume tile there so you have quick access to volume because even though I applaud LG for being innovative and putting the uh, volume rocker on the back and, and experimenting like that and creating such a, a nice phone with slim bezels and slim build and comfortable holding the hand, putting the volume rocker on the back is, is nice, but it's not always convenient. So that's something I enjoy. And of course, expanded desktop mode. I use that on most ROMs. I like the extra screen real estate. Quick launch. Obviously, you know, you've seen in the past. I use screen on. I'm sorry, screen off and lock to give me uh, a quick screen off. Google search, quick way to take screenshots. There, it's kind of nice. Make it whatever you want. Themes does support themes. I haven't loaded any themes on here. Um, animation control. This is nice. It's nice that they include this in here that you can customize your animations, scrolling speed, etc. A lot of people complain about scrolling in these ROMs, or in some ROMs, I should say. Um, <clears throat> color calibration, I didn't, I didn't get a chance to really experiment with that too much. Performance-wise, it's uh, not overclocked. It's 2.2 gigahertz, but it does support down to 300 gigahertz. Standard uh, governors that you'd normally see: interactive, conservative, on demand, user space, power save, and performance. Uh, you will find more choices if you flash the furnace kernel. I did flash the furnace kernel. And uh, one thing I noticed from the furnace kernel is uh, obviously you can overclock to 2.4 gigahertz, but I also noticed that it seemed like um, uh, the battery life uh, kind of really, really performed better with the furnace kernel than did the stock kernel. Now I didn't reflash the furnace kernel on this uh, for this build because um, there was a mention in the XDA forms that there have been changes to the kernel and some and some updates to the kernel and uh, while I definitely look forward to seeing more of those changes and more of those updates as people continue to, to update these the kernel for this phone <clears throat> so things can run better and bring it up to date um, I haven't noticed anything significantly better about it at the from what I'm using the phone for um, <clears throat> other things to note A2DP Bluetooth does not send metadata to my Ford Touch or to Kia Uvo. Those are the two systems that I have to test it with. So it wasn't sending these song titles or artist information. With my Ford Touch, it was doing the text messages at first, but then it just stopped working. 
Um, I didn't see any crashes. I didn't see any system UI crashes. It just stopped working. I did resync the phone and I got the first text message no problem, but after that it didn't send any more to the system. So I'm not sure what's going on there using the same uh, messaging application that comes on the phone. So uh, there's no factors that have changed there from the other ROMs that I've used. Um, brightness, it does seem to be on a little bit of the brighter side, even when uh, on auto and turned all the way down in the dark, it was just a little bit uh, brighter than some other ROMs. Camera is a little slower than, say, your Omni ROM, your Paranoid Android, or even your Mati ROM. Battery life, let's talk about battery life. Another one of the reasons why I'm you know, going to come back to this ROM and try it later after they have some more time with it is uh, I'm at 5 hours, 23 minutes, and uh, I'm at 61% and that's only an hour and 12 minutes of screen on time and we'll go through this 5 minutes 45 seconds CPU time keep awake time 2 hours 43 minutes voice calls 11 minutes 16 seconds because I use my phone as a phone and <clears throat> cell standby 5 hours 23 minutes okay pretty standard and if we come over here to the wake clock detector you'll see that Google search is at the top here with 16 times waking the phone up that's not excessive by any means so I'm not quite sure what's draining the battery down here uh, benchmarks if you're worried about benchmarks uh, real quick here 6952 from a fresh install no customizations on the ROM that's on Dalvik I am on art right now trying it out and I got 8222 and then I got 9895 and when I used the furnace kernel, I got 11,343. So if you care about um, benchmarks, there you go. If that's your thing. As far as free RAM goes, this is a pretty lightweight ROM. 1.1 uh, to uh, 1.2 gigs when I'm not doing anything on the phone. And the other thing that I do like about this ROM, it seems trivial, but I do like the boot animation. Let me show you that before I conclude here. It does reboot pretty quickly, which is nice. When I say this boot animation is nice, it's very minimal, but it's not the standard Google Nexus boot that I see on a lot of ROMs. And there's nothing wrong with the Google Nexus boot uh, animation at all, and, and it seems trivial because how often are you rebooting your phone um, unless you have a problem. But it's just something that I like. I, I like to see this kind of uh, creativity, um, this, this attention to detail. So there you have it, Nameless ROM. I'll come back to it and try it on another nightly. Uh, maybe if they get a, a good release candidate, I'll come back and give it a try.